Hello everyone! As I mentioned herbal medicine and Eastern medicine here and there, I'd like to tell you a little bit more detail about the herbal medicine today. There are many types of herbal medicine. Take a round pill. Capsule or powder. And paste like a honey texture and candy this is fancy gold cover like a jelly kind and this is usually for the gift and the most powerful one herbal decoction There are about 300 classical herbal formula that are widely recognized and used, and countless of contemporary formula that are newly developed. In order for an herbal formula to show full effectiveness, it has to follow classical principle, which include incorporating four different categories of herbs. King herb, deputy herbs, and assistant herbs, and envoy herbs. As you can tell by the name, king herbs are the principal herbs that provide the main effect in the prescription. For example, Huang Qin might be used as a king herb to clear heat and dry deadness. Deputy herbs enhance or assist the therapeutic action of the king herbs. So for example, Huang Nian can serve as a deputy herb to support Huang Qin by enhancing its heat clearing properties. Assistant herbs treating accompanying symptoms and moderate harshness or toxicity of a primary herbs. Sengjin, for instance, might be included to elevate nausea and uh, protect the stomach. Envoy herbs guide the other herbs in the formula to specific meridian channel or organ or exert a harmonizing influence. One of the most common envoy herbs is a ganchao known in the United States as a licorice root. Ganchao is frequently used to harmonize the formula and to guide the herbs to digestive symptom. If you look at herbal supplement, you will most likely to find ganchao or licorice root as it is a basic herb to use in many herbal prescription. To make pills and capsules and paste, we need to produce them in large quantities. Because of this, we can only make these types for a popular formula that can generally apply to large population. But the power of herbal medicine lies in the customization for each individual. Even with the same symptoms, the root cause of those symptoms is often different. So herbal decoction is the only way to customize herbal medicine. To make about one round of herbal decoction, usually there are anywhere between 6 to 40 different types of herbs and about three to six kilograms of herbs are used. And it takes about four to six hours from starting to uh, packaging. Each type of herbal medicine has a pros and cons. The pros of pill types are they are easy to carry, have a better shelf life, and most importantly, you don't taste much, even though you can smell it when you put it in your mouth. The downside is that they cannot be customized. So their effectiveness is a little less than decoction. The pros of decoction are they are very powerful and effective. However, the downside is that they have a shorter shelf life, must be stored in cool, shaded area. Most importantly, the taste is not that great. It tastes like a strong tea, like 20 tea bags in a cup, like bitter and earthy. To me, it's not bad at all, and some formulations are actually taste good, but some patients have a hard time taking it. We ship um, herbal decoction nationwide, and although it's well sealed and well packed with a fragile sticker with no double stacking, sometimes these pouches pop open. So these are the downside of it. Another question I get all the time is, is it okay to take it long term? Usual dosage for the, this uh, pill, round pill type is about three to four grams. And that's about this much.
This is about 3.5 gram and this is one dosage too. I'm sorry, somebody just walked in. That wasn't expected. I was gonna redo the video, but then that was my second time. So I basically had this much, two dosage of this, and two pouches of herbal decoction. As you see, it is okay to take a large amount at once and long term, because this one was for chronic coughing, which tonifying the functionality of lung, and this one was uh, for hangover, or liver detox, so tonifying the functionality of the liver. Of course, there are some formulation or herbs you shouldn't take for long term. Um, for example, constipation. This one is okay, but you know, like a Sena tea, that you shouldn't take it for long term. But if you're under Eastern medicine provider's care, you don't need to worry about that because 99.9% .9 of problem happens when you try it at home without physician's guide. Also, this is not scientifically proven, but when I was in Eastern Medical School, there were two types of students. Those with a family background in Eastern Medicine who grew up with herbal medicine, and those who did not. As I mentioned in one of my videos, I really don't get sick. Even if I catch a cold, I might feel uncomfortable for one day, but the next day I feel fine. Surprisingly, students who grew up with herbal medicine were like me. I really wish somebody could do some research on this matter. But anyway, Korean and Chinese people often take herbal medicine to promote their energy, boost their immune system quarterly, or when the season changes, and often take them as a preventive measure without any symptoms. This is pretty common and normal in Chinese and Korean culture, especially among elderly people. And this immune system boosting or preventive type of medicine is one of the herbal formula covered by Korean National Insurance. This show how common and widely used this type of herbs. Side effect wise, the most common side effect would be diarrhea. But most of the time, that's because your body is very new to these herbs. It usually goes away after one or two days. Herbal medicine is the most natural medicine you can get. It's very safe and yet very effective. It can even stop the period for women. I think I pretty much covered the most question I get about the herbal medicine, but if you have more question, feel free to let me know in the comments. Health is wealth, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. See you next time.